It's a great pleasure to be on with the World Glorious Network this morning. I uh, haven't been on for some time now, but welcome to you all. And it's a great pleasure to be with you again. Today I want us to concentrate on knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Who am I? The psalmist said in Psalm 8 and verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Have you ever seriously considered what is man? In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, we have the following words. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. Man didn't evolve, he was created in the image of God. In the image of God, he created man, male and female, he created them. So you see, the fact that man evolved, is not truth, it's a lie, it's a myth, because God created man in his own image and likeness. God reproduced himself. Oh, that's a wonderful word, isn't it? God reproduced himself. How it thrills my heart to think that God reproduced himself. See, God is a spirit. The Bible tells us so in John and chapter 4 and verse 24. It says that God is spirit. And God reproduced himself. We read in Genesis chapter 1. Therefore, if we were made in his image and his likeness, then that makes us a spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Spirit begat spirit. Hallelujah. How wonderful it is to know that we're in the God class. That's right. We're in the God class. You see, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, and many people know the record of the creation of the world. But just to recap, we know that before the fall in the garden, during his fellowship with God, Adam had his spirit ruling him. Adam was led by his spirit. And Adam's senses were subject to his spirit. Now this, this is very important that we get hold of this. Adam's senses were subject to his spirit. But when Adam sinned and committed high treason, then his spirit received the nature of the adversary. You see, at that point, Adam was born again. He was born into a sinful nature. 
his spirit became subject to his senses. Now we've covered a lot of ground in the last 30 seconds. I want to allow you to absorb that. God is a spirit. We were made in his likeness and in his image. And therefore we are spirit. You see, what you're looking at now on the screen is not David Brewer. What you're looking at is the body that God has given me to carry my spirit. For I am a spirit. That is why Jesus said, I can give to you eternal life. Just recently, uh, I saw a clip on Facebook, which someone had put up and it said that you don't need to worry about dying because you will live forever. What you do need to worry about is location, location, location. Hallelujah. You and I, this very day, can know eternal life through Jesus Christ. God has made provision for us to live eternally with him, like him. And we can share in that eternal life because we are a spirit. Now, if you are not born again, if you have not received Jesus Christ into your life, you will live eternally. You will not die, but you will not go to heaven. Unless you receive God's forgiveness, unless you receive eternal life through Jesus Christ, then there is a hell prepared. Oh, that's a word that people don't want to use today, but it's so true. There are so many people who are going carelessly to hell. And Jesus has died. He's made a covenant. That's a powerful word. He shed his blood to seal that covenant between me and God. And you can know that covenant between you and God. Because Jesus shed his blood. It's written in blood. Going back to Adam in the garden, when he fell, when he sinned. Today we talk about people falling in preference to acknowledging that some people sin. When Adam sinned, he broke off his fellowship in the spirit with God and his senses became his controller. We all have our senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting and feeling. Adam needed these senses because he was not being led by the Spirit. So how would he know if something was too hot or too cold? If something was good for him or something was poison? He needed his five senses because they had taken over from his spirit. This must be understood, and it must be understood now. Now. This is a serious thing. 
famous writer called E.W. Kenyon once said that until your spirit gains the mastery over your senses, your faith will never be strong and vigorous. Until your spirit gains the mastery over your senses. This is what we need today. Our senses will tell us all sorts of lies. Our senses will lead us astray. But Jesus has made a covenant with the Father and with us that we might know eternal life with Jesus in heaven and not with Satan in hell. The choice is ours. It's available. We have been given a conscience, which is the voice of the Spirit. We've been given reason which is the voice of our mind. We've been given feelings, which is the voice of our body. Conscience, voice of the spirit. Reason, voice of the mind. Feelings, voice of the body. You say, well, how could Paul, the Apostle, say to Ananias that I have lived in all good conscience. You see, the fallen man, the man that has not been forgiven, has not received God's great salvation, still has a conscience. It's the voice of his spirit. It's the voice of his fallen spirit. And Paul, his unregenerate, spiritually dead man, could say that he'd lived in all good conscience. He was a man who was persecuting the Christians. He was a man who conceded to Stephen being stoned to death. He was having the followers of Jesus Christ put to death. And yet he said, I have lived in all good conscience. You see, your conscience will change when your spirit is born again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if you're taking notes. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is the real you. This is the real man. What is man? He is a spirit. His spirit lives in a body and he has a soul. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, here Paul writes, for he hath made Jesus to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That word made is significant there. We have been made the righteousness of God in Jesus. You see, if you take a Toyota or a Ford or whatever type of car is most popular to you 
and you put a Rolls Royce badge on the front of it, it will still be the car it was. The only way that you will get a Rolls Royce is to get one that was made a Rolls Royce. We have not been changed. We have been made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Get hold of that. A new creature. The old is gone. I don't have hereditary diseases. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, I've just preached myself happy. God has delivered me from them when he made me a new creation. For he made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Jesus. We have been made the righteousness of God. Just like a Rolls Royce is made a Rolls Royce. It's not a Ford with a Rolls Royce badge on it. It's not a Toyota with a Rolls Royce badge on it. It was made a Rolls Royce. I want you to understand today wherever you are, whatever time of day it is with you, that you can be a new creation today. The old has gone. Jesus said that he is not willing that any should perish, that any should go to hell. Jesus wants hell empty and heaven full. He wants you to be a born again creature for your spirit to become a new creature. Put off the old man and put on the new. We are made in the image and the likeness of God. What is man that thou art mindful of him? He is a spirit. He is a spirit made in the image and likeness of God, who is spirit, who lives in a body. And Jesus Christ made a covenant with the Father and took our sin that we might become children of God. Today, I want to invite you to receive what Jesus paid a great price, to receive the forgiveness, the forgiveness of that sin that Adam put into mankind. It's not just the things you did wrong this morning or the things you did wrong yesterday. For I was born in sin and shapen in iniquity, the Bible says. I invite you right now to say this prayer after me, if you would like to become a Christian. Living God and loving Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to this earth. I thank you that Jesus died for my sin. And I thank you today that Jesus is risen from the dead. 
I believe that Jesus is alive. And I invite you into my heart right now. Jesus, come and be my savior. Be my shepherd. And Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my life. Lead me and guide me in the way that I should go. Thank you, Father, that Jesus made such a great covenant for me. And I receive, I believe, and I am born again. Thank you, Jesus. If you've prayed that prayer, I invite you to write to um, World Glorious Network TV and tell them that you have become a Christian. Tell them that you have received God's forgiveness. Until next time, I say goodbye and may God bless you. Goodbye. Come away.